it's the next level. A pencil for a pen. An apple for an orange. A dance for a smile. For Mr. Layton's eyes open. These trades don't always go the way you plan. You give more than you get. The terms change. You end up having to trade with yourself. I stake my future on a single trade. A life with him for a place on this train. It's been 19 revolutions. show panelers i'm steve and i'm daphne and this is a spoilerful podcast for snowpiercer season two episode four a single trade and our synopsis is as the big alice crew are granted shore leave on snowpiercer Leighton and wilford have differing opinions on the future and that they do yes so what did you think of this episode in general daphne well, you know that Miss Audrey is one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. We don't often get a lot of screen time for her. So I was pretty excited when the episode started and she was doing the opening monologue. And it didn't disappoint. Absolutely. I feel like the episode was packed full of lots of little things and some information that may prove useful later on. Absolutely. And I, I feel the same way. I was really glad to get this Miss Audrey kind of episode. And I, I was, at first, I didn't think there was a lot in this episode until I watched it the second time. And then on the second viewing, I was like, man, there's a lot in this episode. I remember the first time watching it thinking, I'm a little disappointed that we're not seeing Melanie. And then when I realized that, you know, story-wise to hold the tension, they were going to have to make us wait until the end to get the ping. Mm -hmm. But we did get more after we heard the ping even. So I, I that was that was good. Yeah, I think for me, we got this backstory, a little bit of backstory on Miss Audrey's relationship with Wilford. And it seems really scary, honestly. Mm -hmm. And you can tell, and I feel like Lena Hall does such a great job with this character, showing us the emotion behind this relationship that she had with him. There's this fear that you can see. And I'm, in watching it, yeah, I will bring up more things later on when we're talking about our numbers. I was happy to see that we got to see a little bit of that complexity of her character plus the background of her relationship with Wilford. Absolutely. And there's a, there's a lot of things that, depending on your your background, that could be triggering in this episode. So I hope yes. no one, like, you know, they, they, they've showed, this is the second time, I think after Kevin's death, they, they showed the, the, the card about suicide awareness. They, they did yes. that same thing this time. So there's definitely some things in here that depending on what your history is, could be, could be triggering for some people. So hopefully everybody's okay after it. And, uh, you know, so I just wanted to put yeah. that out there. <laughs> it definitely was. There were some pretty serious undertones yeah. during this episode so yeah well as always i will put it to you ladies first for our top five all right well my number five is josie and her choice because i really believe it was her choice to go with the doctor's headwood or frankenstein mm -hmm. as i call them to go down there and see what they could possibly do about all of her frostbite because as we all know, Melanie caused a great deal of damage to Josie last season. It was great to see she's alive. And I'm kind of deciding now that I think it's good she's alive because I want to see what she can bring to the table by being kind of a spy. Mm -hmm. But I do think that even though she talked to Leighton about whether or not she should go, I do think that she knew already that she was going to go. 
because she can be eyes and ears for him and be able to, you know, get the lay of the land on the other side of the border. Mm -hmm. However, I was a little bit scared when I saw that she was put in the same room with Icy Bob. Yeah. Ugh. And why did Wilford want this trade? I feel like that's kind of tied into it. I'm not really sure why he wanted this trade, other than he wanted to go see Miss Audrey. But I feel like Alex said to him, hey, why didn't you just invite her here? I think that's too simple. I think he likes to play the complex game. Yeah, there's definitely something more to him bringing Josie down to, to Big Alice. And I had a little bit of this in my notes. Just we talk, You talked about her influence last week and the control she has. So I, I love that, that she pulls in the tailies and she, she gets to tell them, you know, to support Leighton. She tells Leighton kind of that she's going to do that. And that it's like you said, it's her choice that I absolutely just love that scene when the, the tailies are all banging on. Oh, that was or as, as strong boy is carrying her. So powerful. So yeah. powerful. And what about getting to see miles? Oh, I, I can't believe last week I had forgotten the kid's name. I felt bad because I was going <laughs> to ask that question. Where is the kid from season one who went up to wanted to be an engineer? And so I was so relieved when we saw him this time that I, I was like, oh, there he is. And we find out that not only is he still studying to be an engineer, but he specifically wants to be a life. How would she call it? Life cycle. I think, engineer. yeah, I feel like it was life science. Something, yeah, something like that so that he can be one of the first people to leave the train. Yes. And go start the colonies. I thought that was, was really, really great. And you could see Josie, just the, 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 the pride she had in that for him. It, even the little bit we got from her eyes and her reaching out to him was just a great scene. Well acted by, by all parties. Yeah. She didn't want Miles to see her like that. She, I mean, she even said that to him that she mm -hmm. didn't want him to see her like that and miles is actually in life systems that's life the systems. name of it okay thank you yeah thank you. and so she and he even told josie that she's his hero mm -hmm. and i think that's a really powerful thing because seeing miles even though she didn't want to him to see her like that i think that will do more to fuel how she proceeds on the other side of the border and he grew taller like, that yeah, was the did. first thing I noticed. Yeah, he is, did. <gasps> Miles! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't they didn't try to write him out or change actors or something. And so we may not see much of him if – because I don't know how old the actor is. I thought the actor was younger than that. I, don't, I didn't look up his age. You know, so I hope we don't have like a Lost in Walt situation or oh, I know. Walking Dead and, and Chandler Riggs situation where we where they have to write him out because of puberty or something like that. So I know. I hope not, because I want to think that he's going to come into play further down the road. Mm -hmm. Like there might be something he can do to help Melanie with yeah. all of this work, because I do think he's a genius. And, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you just said genius because that goes right into my number five, which is Alex kind of showing off her intelligence and her her vocabulary by calling this Audrey uh, Mr. Wilford's paramour, you know, yes. and, and she uses that. Then she says something about the, calling the night car a cabaret. And I just thought that was that was great. And I chuckled every time I heard her say cabaret. And I just it, it, I thought it was interesting, though, that Wilford forbid her like in an angry tone almost like yes like he's asserting his dominance or something over her to tell her not to use that word and i i just i that it kind of surprised me that he he showed that emotion and maybe that just shows us how deeply him and miss audrey you know they have this this connection or this uh whatever it is yeah he, she definitely hit a button mm -hmm. she had a nerve with that because the first time he kind of let it go but the second time he was immediately yeah agitated after hearing that yeah exactly exactly so uh, yeah i think i think there's a lot to the audrey wilford story i think it's something that's very complex it's something mm -hmm. that goes very deep and I'm looking forward to seeing it all unravel so that we can learn more. We got glimpses in this episode. Yeah. But I also appreciated that Alex is very, very smart. There were some other interactions she had in the episode today that I really enjoyed as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And she's, uh, she, she's just showing us there's, there's a lot more to her. And I've got some more in my notes and in my, my numbers about Alex and more of what she said later. So. Yeah. Well, my number four is basically 
Wilford and his control of Big Alice. And it's a much bigger picture, too. It's not just Big Alice. It's really what was said last week, what Bennett said to Leighton about Wilfred loving control. Mm -hmm. I feel like we got some glimpses of that this week, not only in the conversation he had with Alex, but also just watching the way that they feed the workers, how everything just mm -hmm. comes down and you're given a tray and it has you know, your food is covered up and they lift the lid and then they give it to you. It seems very regimented and it just seems very, very under control. Yeah. And I noticed that, you know, the workers don't seem to have a lot of happiness or emotion. They're just kind of doing what they're told without any, you know, without thinking. Mm -hmm. They're just doing it. Right. Well, it and even when, when he announces who's going to go to the night car, you know, at, he kind of gives them a little briefing. And you, I, that was so show. There was no way he Of course he, was he wasn't. Alex names. told, he, Alex told uh, Amelia that she was going to Amelia, be selected. Yeah. And so he, he knew exactly who he was, he was, he was, and he lets them know, this is not for yes. you. This is for me. I'm the one. You just are going to be background. And even Alex, when they get to the night car, mm -hmm. she kind of fades into the background and just kind of takes a seat and kind of waits for everything yeah. to happen around. I noticed that as well. And he was very, very calculating and said, this is my night. It's a chance mm -hmm. for him to meet up with old acquaintances. So I think he had definite plans for what he wanted to accomplish. He seemed very determined that Melanie was not going to make contact and was going to be dead. And you could see right. his face. There yeah. were two things that you saw when that was announced. His face and Alex's face. Alex's face is mm -hmm. one I think that's the most interesting because she's kind of this mix between she's happy that the connections make because she like, you know, she is connected with her mother, but she knows mm -hmm. that he's going to be agitated about it. So her look, mm -hmm. her look kind of captures both of those emotions, I think. Because it's really calm, yeah. but it's also a look of, she's definitely looking like she's thinking. Like, Well, and I think she's worried. She's worried because I don't think she, I think, I don't know if she knows exactly what Wilford has planned, but I think she knows he's got to have some sort of plan to not let Melanie get back on the train. Oh. I, that's, that's just my total speculation, but I think she sus either suspects it or she knows outright. That he doesn't want Melanie. Yeah, I think I see Bob. I still stand by what we talked about last week, that I see Bob is a part of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And I'm also concerned that Josie is going to end up being part of that too, in some weird way. But the difference is, even mm -hmm. though Josie's angry with Melanie because of what happened to her, she understands that the future of the world is at stake and Melanie is important to that process. That's interesting you bring that up. That could be a really interesting storyline if Josie has to save Melanie's life from Icy Bob or to get her back on on the train, that would be... Could be interesting. I don't know how close it is to, to things, yeah. but it's just a theory that I'm tossing around yeah, now that Josie's that's... down there with the Doctor's Frankenstein. That could actually, that could be interesting, so... All right. So my number four is I, I think I've got this correct. And, and if I'm if I'm wrong or if you remember it differently, let me know, because I think there were two things that were confirmed for us in this episode. I think the first is that they've been traveling for seven years because that's what the woman says when she, she eats the, Emilia, when she eats the fruit. She says seven years. It's the, the best thing I've had in, in seven years. And then I believe yes. that Miss Audrey and her monologue at the beginning said 19 rotations. So that means a rotation is less than a year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe so. And I think Wilfred also said that he had been mourning Miss Audrey for seven years. I, yeah, I believe he, we heard that in an earlier or some at some point. seven. So I think seven years has finally kind of been confirmed. Yeah. And I think th we've heard that a couple of times. That they've said how many uh, revolu um when he was talking about the revolts, I think he said there's been four rebellions in seven years or yes. something, something like that. So last season. So okay, so that's really all I had in for my number four it was just a quick a quick recap of understanding that it's been seven years, nineteen rotations. So I, I yeah. So 
I just think that's interesting that we still don't know exactly what route they're taking. And obviously, we talked about this last week, they can obviously change the route while they're going because they're going to come back to that station in a month instead of however long it should take yeah. to get back to that It station. makes me wonder, are they going over the Bering Strait into Siberia? Are they going to turn around over in Russia and come back that way? Right. Or is there just something else? Is there going to be a shift and is Big Alice going to become the front of the train and Snowpiercer be the back? That could at happen. Some, at some point. Because I know trains, they sometimes do that. Yeah. You know, if they have engines at both at both ends. So, and I've seen trains, even they don't have engines at both ends, reverse. Mm-hmm. So it might be interesting. It's, it's going to be an interesting thing going forward. Yeah. There's a lot... There were a lot of things that we saw in this episode that I think are just planting seeds for the future. I feel like it was one of those big episodes for that. My number three is Zara as a wild card, because Mm -hmm. I truly think she is, there's potential in her to be so much more. I mean, she's carrying Leighton's child. And we saw them standing during the party and they both have their hands around her tummy. And I was thinking about that and wondering, I'm not sure that's a good idea because you don't really want Wilford to see that. Oh, yeah. I, I hadn't even, didn't even think about that, that you don't want Wilford to have that intel that someone's no. carrying a child. So. Exactly. You don't want that, see, that information because he's already proven that he likes to play these games. Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid that he would end up doing something to Zara. But I really enjoyed the conversation that Zara had with Ruth. Mm -hmm. And wanting to join hospitality to help Ruth bridge this connection between Ruth and Leighton. Because Leighton doesn't seem to trust her. Or Ruth doesn't think Leighton is trusting her. Yes. And I think she wants to work that out. Absolutely. I had a little bit of this in my in my notes. It's just that I love this this idea of Zara joining hospitality because it, it gives that, like you said, that bridge between Ruth and Leighton, that person. And I, it, there was an interesting exchange there when she's dressing Leighton. I thought it was really cool that she dressed him almost exactly the opposite of how Wilford yes. was dressed. I don't know if Zara suspected Wilford would come in, you know, with this really, was it purple? What was the color? It looked like a, a lavender, dark. Lavender. It was kind of, yeah. A, okay. A purple. It had a purple hue, I guess. Yeah, but definitely this, a very rich man's kind of I'm important tuxedo look. And she had yes. Leighton, you know, you got to look like a, a, a relaxed a kind of man. A regular man. A regular, yeah. like, everyday man. Yeah. Neighborhood I really, guy. Really, yeah. I really, really liked that that whole interchange there. And there's a point during that where he he says something about their relationship and she says, well, we're not together anymore. Yes. And I thought that was another, so she, and you remember last episode, she told him to go be with Josie. Yes. I think it's an interesting dynamic that we were wondering if this was going to be a love triangle or it looks like, it it looks like anyway, that that's not going to be the case. That Zara has, you know, she's conceded the fact that he's, going to be with Josie but you know have a child with her however that's going to work out yeah I'm wondering about that and I don't know about Josie's long-term life expectancy there's that as well I didn't even realize she was still alive to be honest well she was as far as I knew before this season she had died okay so we we didn't have a confirm that she was still alive until Mm -mm. this season this season yeah I didn't see anything Okay. That indicated cool. that. I don't remember anything that indicated that. I, I don't either. And I, I didn't I didn't go back and rewatch uh, season one. So Yeah. I'm now regretting even more and more that I didn't go back and rewatch season one before. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much, but the last episode always makes me sad because so much happened. Yeah. That was sad and we kind of got into that a little bit in this episode. Absolutely. And that takes me right into my number three. Which is Till, uh, Till and her little, her breakdown as she's looking at all the faces that died, uh, in, in the revolution. And I love the fact that she has, she knows the exact number of people that I think she says 2,747. And then she corrects herself and says, no, it's 46 now because a chef just died. Yes. And it's, it was just amazing to me that she's keeping such good track of that. And whether that's going to weigh on her guilt-wise or whether it's just, 
you know, you would think Ruth or somebody in hospitality would be more likely to be keeping track of those exact numbers. But, you know, Till knows how many people died in that train car. I mean, I think LJ says 170 people in that first class car. Yes. That was, that was ejected. And so Till knows exactly how many people are on Snowpiercer. And then I love that she's continuing this investigation, you know, and she tells the Tailies, I told you I was going to take care of it after they attack that uh, Boki. Boki. The breech, yeah, yeah, the, the Breachman. Breech and I, I didn't get an impression of whether she questioned them or questioned Boki about if he's continuing to deny that they did the finger cutting or not. But it, it seems like she may have gotten that. I mean, what do you think? Do you he think she, said he didn't do it. But he was he was talking to the Tailies who were attacking him. Yeah. At that point, he wasn't. That was before Till came in. So I don't know if they gave Till that info. I would hope they did. That she knows that they denied it, even though because you would think they would be the logical choice to be suspects because they're yes. clearly Wilford cultists. Absolutely, I'm very suspect of them. I'm suspect. Of, I'm starting to be suspect of everyone. Yeah. Because I yeah. feel like. But I also question, how would anyone on Snowpiercer know that Wilford was still alive and that he was driving Big Alice? Like, unless there's some communication that no one knows about. Well, but the attack happened after. Yeah. So, no, after, right? So they know that Wilford's alive. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's part of the mystery. I like that we're getting this, a little bit more of this mystery. You know, it, it ran the whole thing of Lila being the, the one who killed the, the guys. And cut their yes. balls off. Yes, uh, last season um, was disturbing, but they kept that investigation kind of going, just kind of throughout the season. Yeah, and I I thought that was really really cool. And so we're getting the same thing here. We're going to get this investigation of who did this attack. You know, probably throughout the season, and, and it's probably going to be something revealed at the very end that it's it's going to be somebody that we would like least expect. It's going to be like a Taily who's. Uh, it can't be a Taylor because they were all stowaways. It's, it's got to be somebody like the janitors or somebody like that. Maybe it's Lila. I don't know. I'm yeah, I'm not sure. And, you know, what I meant by they didn't know that Wilford was alive is before Big Alice hooked up with oh. them, the person has to be, I am I find it hard to believe that it's just anybody because it's okay. someone. Okay, there's two trains of thought I have with this. One, I feel like. It's just a Wilford loyalist who, as soon as the tail hooked up, or as soon as Big Alice hooked up, was able mm -hmm. to communicate with Wilford and, you know, swore allegiance or whatever. Because I have a hard time believing that someone could have been on Snowpiercer and had the information that Wilford was still alive and Big Alice was a thing. No, I'm I'm with you on that. It's somebody. It, it's somebody who who just who there whatever was just awakened and either Wilford ordered them to do the attack just to put kind of fear in the tailies yeah or to cause this this tension between the tailies and the the breachmen yeah you know i have a feeling that 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 you're right that there's somebody on snowpiercer that had some sort of contact with wilford after big alice i don't think it was before after big alice attached and he was able to manipulate. It's going to be someone like in in the movie. You had that guy who was like almost the equal yes. to Mr. Wilford in the back. Yeah. And when he finally admitted that he was the one who was manipulating things in the back, it's going to be somebody like that. It's going to be somebody who, and it might be a Taylor. It might be one of the stowaways. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's so much. I feel like we got so much information mm -hmm. in this episode, but we also now have more questions. Exactly. exactly. So it's gonna. It's going to be a week to week thing of figuring it out as we go and trying to piece it together as best we can. Mm -hmm. So your number three leads into my number two, which is, was about Till's breakdown mm -hmm. and her following Boki to the church and then going in and actually looking at the photos of Clay and Gabby and Santiago and Riggs and breaking down about it. Because mm -hmm. I think she has tried to use this technique where she distracts herself by focusing on her job focusing on anything else but the pain of loss and everything that's happened because it was a huge deal for them. I mean, they all fought. She saw people die. She mm -hmm. lost her relationship. So she's really in this kind of weird headspace where she doesn't really know 
who she is. Interesting. I like that. That's a a good way of looking. Yeah, she's kind of, and and she's trying to find her identity, kind of. Yes. I like it. And so, remember, I think his name is Pasta Logan. Mm -hmm. He tried to talk to her the week before. And she, and give her, I think it was a St. Christopher medal. Mm -hmm. And she she didn't want it. She didn't want anything to do with it. So I think for her to end up in the church is kind of interesting because she was so against it. Like Mm -hmm. she didn't want anything to do with, he was trying to help her. Yeah. Because he could see that she was struggling and she didn't really want anything to do with what he was trying to do to help her. And I think this episode, it just all came to a head. I think this whole promotion to detective has been a great distraction for her. And even though she's trying to figure this stuff out, going in to see all of the memorials Mm -hmm. really hit her and brought her to a place she really didn't want to go. Yeah. But now she's there and now she's got to figure out, okay, well, I'm going to have to face the things. You know, she's carrying a lot on her shoulders. She's in tune with this focus on death and loss, but she's trying to do her job. And I feel like Pasta Logan is really trying to get her to face the things that are upsetting her so she can move past them. Mm Mm-hmm which is not something that she really wanted to do. She just kind of was running away from it by focusing on everything else. Yeah. At least that's what I think. I, I think you're right. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how she deals with everything going forward, continuing on in this. So yeah, I agree. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting. The one thing I wanted to mention though about Boki that doesn't tie to this number, but is something that I think we have to really think about. It's a, Tiny tidbit, Boki built bridges for Wilford. Yeah, so he's another one of those ones that like Leighton Leighton talked about. He asked, well, who all had contact or who had close contact with Mr. Leighton prior to the train? And I don't think anyone in that little circle, like Roach said, I was his security. Ruth was hospitality. You know, they all, like he hired Ruth, They Miss Audrey. But none of them mentioned that Boki. No. So, so that is interesting that, that it, it could be, there could be a closer tie there than. Maybe. But I think too, they talked in several conversations. There were discussions about him building tracks and building trains, building bridges. Like he was doing all of these things. Mm-hmm. You know, he had the money. He just went to town and did all of this stuff. I think his involvement in how this all happened is maybe more than what we've seen. Okay, I see where you're going. So he may know more than what he's letting on as far as what's out there and available. Like there may be more supply cars out there. There may be more other bridges out there. Yeah, there may be more out there than what we think. I think he might be more complicit in the event that caused the, the mm. Great Ice Age. And I stand behind my statement last week. I don't think he wants it to end. Oh, absolutely. I, I think I think you're right. Are you know, Wilford or Boki? You're saying Boki's in that? Wilford. Bucket? No, Wilford. Oh, I, I think, don't think, I think yeah. definitely Wilford does not want this to end. Wilford, no, he Wilford doesn't. wants to stay in control. And, and yeah. that's interesting, though. I didn't think about him having any kind of complicity in... in causing but it would make sense you know if he was if he had kind of an idea it was coming he knew to set this whole thing up because they wouldn't have set it up beforehand right you know yeah they wouldn't have i mean kind of like what we're going through right now nobody would was going to know that this was going to happen (laughs) unless unless they planned it and and foresaw it interesting interesting yeah so i yeah i think there's a lot more where this is only episode four Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to uncover this season. Yeah. So I'm excited. My number two is Alex and Lila Jr. Oh, so much fun. I thought it was interesting. And and at first I kind of thought it was a little, is it a little coincidental that they would know each other? And then I thought, well, no, they're, they're roughly the same age. Yes. They're both from rich families who were involved in each other. Like, like uh, Mr. Wilford knew who Lila was and so it makes sense their families would know each other that they may have gone to school together. And so I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I, I loved the whole, when they're joking about their moms being dead and, 
you know, Lila said, makes a face of what her mom probably looks like. And then Alex is like, she makes a face of her mom, like holding the handle of the sled. I, mm -hmm. I, it was a little creepy, but you know, uh, that's, but I also thought we get a very interesting comment that Alex makes. And that's that she says something like either she or Wilford or both of them didn't realize that she would care as much for Melanie as she cares for. Her. Yes. And I thought that was interesting because she also told it to the one person who is definitely going to scurry back to Wilford at some point and let him know that, Hey, Alex cares more about Melanie than you think she does. You know? Yeah. The whole time I'm thinking, isn't it lovely you're having this little reunion, but you cannot trust LJ. No. Yeah. I don't know what side of the building she's on. I feel like she's going to sell her information to the highest bidder. Because like Wilford, she takes great joy in manipulation. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is, you know, she's a younger female version of Wilford. She lo she's manipulative. She likes to control the situation. She likes to get away with things. And I feel like even though she might be down, she's definitely not out and she's no. going to figure out how to make her way. I think she thought her life was going to get better if her parents were gone. And I think she's now learned that that's not the case. Yeah. Interesting. That is an interesting take because I didn't, I didn't, wasn't sure, but that's interesting. Yeah. I'll have to think about that one for a bit and how she felt about that, about her parents. Yeah. So that leads us to your number one, I believe. Yeah. Um. Yes. So my number one is Miss Audrey. She's a key. She's a poem. We got a lot of info in this. Mm -hmm. We learned that she was a high end escort since she was 18. And basically, I feel like she sold her soul to work for Wilford. Mm -hmm. She was his exclusively for years. She said she was paid in gold, but she lost so much. Mm -hmm. And reconnecting with him opens a Pandora's box. And I think we saw that. I think we started to see that. And I'm really worried that she's not strong enough to be able to fend off going back to that place. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, she it took a long time for her to wash her hands of him. And I think that it's an old, comfortable place, even if it's a little bit icky. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a comfortable place that she knows, you know, what it feels like. Right. So for her to go back to it, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm really worried about her, yeah. about her sanity. Because Wilfred set this exchange up. He wanted to see Audrey. That was part of it. Yes. And the piece that we saw, one of the biggest things was he was in that magical room, which I can't remember what the name of it is. I don't either. I hate that I can't remember what they called those in the first season. But they went into that room so she could show him what she's turned the night car into. And they're in a bathtub, and he's having her slit her wrist, which is a memory of his. Mm -hmm. So he tells her, you know, but I saved you. Right. Well, did he save Kevin? No. I mean, oh, I don't know. We don't really know if Kevin's dead. Oh, I, I, now that you say that, I guess you're right. We don't 100% know that he didn't save Kevin there at the last second. He could have, I mean, I they've never said that he was alive or dead. Mm-hmm. They said that he wasn't well. Right. Well, if he's recovering and, from this, I mean, I mean, and, yeah. and that whole thing in the bathtub was creepy the first time. Oh, it's yeah. just as creepy when you see that it's Audrey in there with him. Mm -hmm. He's a very, oh, I, I can't, I, yeah. Um, it's, it's a cult. It's a very cult. Yeah. That's the only thing I think of is, is having this mind control over someone. And, but, and Miss Audrey was my number one as well. So I, I love that you, that you bring her up and we, we're going to talk about her because she does at the beginning, she assures Layton that she's, that she's not going to get drawn in mm -hmm. by Mr. Wilford, that she's going to be able to stay out of, out of his kind of his thrall, you know, and then she sings that song that is very pointedly yes. about getting back together with him. And so we don't know if that's her trying to manipulate him or her, you know it, it's one of those things that when you're someone who manipulates people in some ways you can be manipulated but also you manipulate back yes i guess i don't know i'm not a calculating person so but yeah so i it's interesting though and at the end i i got the impression at first at the end when she's talking to layton 
that again, she's assuring him. She says something like he's right where we want him to be. But then when we see her doing that little dance, the last look she has is at the W. Yes. And so I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm torn about whether, which, who is she telling the truth to? Is she telling the truth to, to Layton? Is she, you know, with Wilford? I feel like she wants to be truthful to Layton. I feel like it's what she really wants. However, mm -hmm. when you're dragged into something that's an old hat or an old habit, mm -hmm. it's really hard to resist. You might be able to resist at first, but over time, if it's a continual picking at, it's going to weigh you down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. So that is our 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 top fives. Uh, we both got a few notes. Let me see. I'm looking through mine to see what we haven't talked about already. We talked about the weirdness of his fetish that was just oh, weird. I don't it, understand. I don't foot. know what it was. I don't understand foot stuff. Uh, if that's what that was. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get to see the notary. You know, Roche says something about he'll take the names to the notary and find out if they're registered passengers or not. And so I was, it, it, I, I'm a notary here in Oklahoma and I got to notarize something just today. Somebody came to my apartment to get something notarized for him. So I was a little disappointed we didn't get to see the notary. Then, of course, I love Layton's little leap of faith, talking about the fact that we have to have a leap of faith mm -hmm. about Melanie, you know, actually making it and being safe. So I thought that was cool. Yes. Um, uh, let me just, I'll run through mine and you can run through yours. Okay. Uh, we didn't, we didn't talk about the female Dr. Headwood. She kind of shushes the male doctor when yes. he starts to kind of give away what the frostbite treatment is. I like that encyclopedias are the source of value. Yes. That was on so Snow cool. Cursor. Yeah. That information is knowledge. And then we even see that between Lila and Alex, she gives her, was it the, the M? The M through W or the M or something it like that. It was the W. It was the W and she pointed out woolly mammoths. Woolly mammoth. That's what and it was. Then okay, I knew it was mammoth. W so. stood for weed, which is what she had. <laughs> right. And it's also Wilford and yes. there's a lot of... Uh, w stands for a lot on this show. And I think everything else I have, we talked about. So... All right. Well, what I have is... Oh, oh, oh go ahead. That, that, that Wilford popping the balloon was just a dick move. Totally. So that was that was him. He was not pleased because he wants mm -hmm. it to fail. He does not want the world to go back to normal because he wants control of everything. Right. So it's right. really creepy. I mean, it's becoming more and more creepy. He's becoming more and more creepy. And I think Sean Bean is killing it. Yeah. As Wilford. He really is doing such a great job of being this charming, suave leader who has sinister ideas that we don't know all of them yet. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So one, we learned that Alex's bunk mate has a name. Her name is Amelia and she was supposed to work on the laundry, but she ended up being a seamstress. And one very cool thing that we learn, she's Australian. <laughs> I loved it when she and the last Australian realized that they are not the last Australian after all. I thought that was so right. awesome. I feel like we needed something like that. And he's given yes. her his lucky goggles, which I think he's trying to set her up to be something. But I'm still concerned that she's going to end up in Wilford's bathtub. Yeah, uh, if she you know, takes him up on this offer of kind of communicating... However, however they're going to communicate, I don't know. It, it, that yeah, scares I'm me. Yeah, I'm really bit, scared. So. And again, we talked about the bridges, but I just keep going back to who is the mole? Is it someone that we trust really well? Mm. Or is it someone on the outskirts like that we would think might be a mole? I don't know if they're going to go in the obvious direction of having it be bulky because that's very obvious that it could be bulky. Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be somebody else? I'll throw out a possibility. And it just came to me this second, so I'm I've not fleshed it out. But what if it's Roche? He's the one that I don't suspect, and so I think anyone is up for suspect mm -hmm. for you to be suspicious of. Yeah, because we've never actually mm -mm. seen his wife. He's talked about her, but you know, uh, I don't think it's Ruth. That's all I can say. I don't think it's. I, I don't. If it was Ruth, I think she would be. Even more. I don't, yeah, think, I don't it's think it's Ruth. Ruth. I don't think it's going to be Ruth. I don't think it's anyone that had that definite connection like that. I don't think it's her. Okay. 
It's going to be somebody yeah. kind of under the surface. I have a feeling kind of. they're going to go in a different direction, but I don't know. I It's really difficult to try to figure it out because this show has done a great job of throwing you curveballs when you're not expecting it. And I like mm -hmm. that because you don't often get that with TV, with cable TV Absolutely. anymore. I Absolutely. mean, unless it's like HBO yeah. or one of the big stars or Showtime, right. a lot of shows, they don't always give you like a complex road instead of going from point a to point b you have to go through all these other steps to get there and so i feel like that's what we're getting and i like that that's one of the things i like about snowpiercer all right so we've got a, a couple of quotes here uh why don't you go ahead and start okay so i have two wilfred when he's talking about miss audrey i kind of alluded to that earlier where he says she's a poem you hear me witchy bird of grace that holds the soul of the train she's a key and I really like, I like that, that quote. I like that. Yeah. The one that jumped out at me um, is a short one, it's, but it's they're coming, <laughs> I think. I know. <laughs> and, that, and that was Zara after she she kind of peeked in on oh. Wilford and Miss Audrey in the, in the night car room. And I'll admit that like, the first time I watched it, and even the second time, I was like, who is that? Because she was in that hospitality uniform. And it wasn't until the second time that I went, oh, that's Zara. Yeah, because it's a new uniform. thing. That's a new thing. Yeah, exactly. I did like also this thing that Poster Logan said to Till. Billions of souls have left us, Bess. It's because we're so few that the survivor's guilt feels hell unbearable. And I think that he's right. Wow. Because there are so few people, it feels even worse. Like life has become yeah. even more yeah. precious because there are not that many living souls left. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then my last one is just Wilford when he's announcing who's going to go over to Snowpiercer with him and he announces Damien Ho. He says, I like the cut of your jib, <laughs> son. <laughs> just, like, I the know. way he talks sometimes is like so pompous and just arrogant. that, And I, I love he it. Is. He's playing Sean so Bean well. is really doing a great job. I feel like the cast of this show in general is really well constructed and the characters that they play match up really well. So I'm... Like I said, I'm Absolutely. super excited to see what happens next. Yes, very, very excited. Uh, so, podcast recommendations. Um, I have one, uh, one or two here. Uh, we have to go back. Lost Revisited. That's a joint podcastica and Next Level Online Network podcast. That's Ben and Kristen uh, rewatching the show Lost. They are currently in season four, uh, and it's a really cool. If you're a Lost fan and you remember the series they it's they do a spoiler full where they're talking about everything that's going to happen and everything that has happened and it's just a wonderful podcast i i love it and then uh, the uh, adrenaline cinema i think we talked about it last week the adrenaline cinema with mark uh, that's on pirate core entertainment he does podcasts where he does those with a special guest he discusses those movies that get you blood yes. pumping sometimes his movies are similar to ones that we cover on run for your lives because they run this fine line between action and monster and disaster. Uh -huh. So it's kind of cool that way. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. that. Okay. So if you just, no, oh, do you I'm have good. any podcast I'm recommendations? Good. I don't to do have now. anything because but, okay. you, you've already <laughs> this week. listed ones that I listen to. So. All righty. Uh, well, as always, we can be heard on any podcast player of choice. I would love for you if you would uh, go out there and give us a review if it's possible. Uh, you can check out our podcast, our uh, website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And of course, as always, our trusty email address, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels to pixels one, the TO is spelled out right in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. And we also have a YouTube page, which is panels to pixels podcast. Next week, we're going to continue our coverage of episode five of Snowpiercer's season. That is going to be fun. I can't wait to see what they give us next week. Absolutely. Very excited. Hopefully we'll, maybe they'll go back and show us. I hope Jeremy. that I they'll know. give us some insight into it. It would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. If it only took her three days, if it only took her yeah. three days to get there, you know, so. All right. Well, Daphne, where can our listeners hear you besides this podcast? Um, you right can now? hear me on my weekly podcast, Run For Your Lives. Pake and I, um, as I mentioned last week, celebrated 25 episodes. The episode that's out now is our 26th episode, where we actually take a look back at the first 25 episodes and break down our oh. top five monsters, characters, and movies. It was a lot of fun. 
and I look forward to the next 25 episodes that we're doing. So it's going to be great. Absolutely. I know Mark and I had a lot of fun when we went over when, when we hit our 100th. It was uh, it was quite a milestone. So uh, it's, it's crazy cool. how time flies. It's so crazy. It is. It is. <laughs> well, as always, thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. <laughs>